Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. Welcome back to the Southern California Prep Insider Basketball Podcast. Tommy and Devin here to give you the top 10. Some good performances from last week and a look ahead into next week. Devin, how are you doing right now? I'm good. I'm good. Just uh, getting ready for some more games this week. And, uh, you know, I'll be at Beckman and University tonight to watch what I'm sure is going to be a high scoring Orange County game. So I'm looking forward to that one. And, uh, you know, this is the part of the season getting into league play now. Teams are becoming a little more familiar with not only their opponents, but each other. So is this really when we kind of stack up, okay, this is how good the teams really are because, you know, now they've gotten through that awkward early season phase and that kind of stuff? Yeah, I think in certain leagues it is. I think in leagues like like the baseline league with Damian Etiwanda, Chino Hills, and all those guys in the Mission League with uh, Harvard Westlake, Crespi, um, uh, Chaminade, St. Francis, I mean – those two leagues are loaded along with the Trinity League. You know, you see upsets in the Trinity League last week with Jay Sarah beating Bosco, who was, you know, state ranked number three, I think, um, at that point. So in those kind of leagues, yeah. In the Pacific Coast League, like the game I'm watching tonight, and the other Orange County leagues, I think you have the favorites and then you have teams who can pull off an upset every once in a while. But in Orange County, outside of, you know, the modern days, Anaheim Canyons, Santa Margaritas, and Jay Saras. I think it's pretty pretty even. So um, it depends on what league. All right. So without further ado, our top ten, or your top ten, excuse me, Devin, who do you have on there? Yeah. So number one, we're going to stick with Bishop Montgomery. Uh, two, Etiwanda. Three, Rancho Christian makes a little bit of a move. Um, four is Sierra Canyon. Five, St. John Bosco. They drop a couple spots after the loss to Jay Sara. Uh, Modern Days sitting at number six. Crespi moves up a couple spots after beating Harvard Westlake. Santa Margarita moves up. They beat Jay Sarah by 20 last week, so that was a nice win for them on the road. Um, nine, Harvard Westlake. And 10, we're going to go with Damian and no ties this week. There we go. Perfect. That's what we like to see. 10 teams, not 11. I'm just going to ask you one question really quickly about the top 10. Etiwanda, Rancho Christian, if you look at the rankings from the beginning of the year to yet to now, probably the two biggest movers. So what what, what about them has has really propelled them through the season up to, up the ranks. Yeah, I think Etowan has been the biggest surprise out of everybody. Um, it probably has a lot to do with Dave Kleckner coming back after a brief hiatus as the head coach. And they just have you know a bunch of guys who buy into the defensive side of the basketball, um, and they just they lock up. They actually are at Damien tonight, so we have a 2-10 matchup um, tonight at Damien. That's a little bit of a, a haul for me <laughs> as far as the drive <laughs> On a Tuesday, so I'm going to keep it Orange County centric this uh, today. But and then R- Rancho Christian, um, Ray Bearfield is also a great coach, and you have two guys six nine and above with skill in the Mobley brothers, Isaiah and Evan. And then I think a lot of what has made Rancho Christian very good this year is their their role guys stepping up, like Isaiah Knox, who's a, who's a senior who, who's hitting threes at a at a high clip, and then. Uh, KJ Redfield, another guy who's stepping up, and Jordan Montgomery, the sophomore point guard, has really starting starting to blossom, come into his own. So, I think with Rancho Christian, you have the two main guys, but they just have a bunch of supporting guys who stepped up too. All right, so we're gonna go from top ten to our standouts and our yep. shoutouts from last week. I'll let you go first, Evan. Who who did you have your eye on from last week? So my first shout out goes to Dylan Thorner of Beckman. I'm going to see him tonight, but he scored 38 points in a win over Woodbridge and then had 22 more in an upset of Northwood, who was ranked number six in Orange County at that time. Um, He shot 18 of 28 from the field in the two games combined, which is impressive at any level. Second will be DJ Rodman. He scored 23 points in the, the, the upset over Bosco last week. I was at that game and they really didn't have an answer for him. That was a nice performance. Next is Justin Williams from Anaheim Canyon. He had 21 points and a win over Yorba Linda in the Crestview League, which is always a, a tough Orange County league. But, you know, Canyon struggled up until the fourth quarter with Yorba Linda in that game. So uh, Williams' 20 points were, were much needed in that 10-point victory. Next is Brandon Williams from Crespi. I'm sure everyone knows that name. Um, he's back to full strength, it, it seems. Full minutes, no restrictions, and he had 37 against Harvard Westlake and that huge Mission League showdown. Um, and, I mean, I wasn't there, but from from everything I've heard from people who were, he was just lighting it up. No one could stop him. And then my fifth is St. Anthony and Bishop Amat, two teams that really went at each other um, last Wednesday at St. Anthony. 
in a Camino Real League game. Uh, it was a 77-71 uh, St. Anthony win over Amat. Um, it was a fun game. I mean, both teams just got after it. It was full court press the entire game. Everyone played fast and hard. Uh, Kakoa Chapman, kind of an underrated senior point guard uh, for St. Anthony, had 19 points. And Damian Moore, who is a grid hoop star at Bishop Amat, he's a running back, a sophomore, had 16 for the Lancers. Um, and one more quick shout out. This is off the cuff a little bit. Tim Burt, a uh, longtime Orange County Register uh, community sports reporter, uh, was laid off today um, in some of the major cuts. And he gave me my first gig um, as a full time sports writer. And he's just a great human being. So shout out to Mr. Burt, um, big time guy, just a great person. And I'm going to double that shout out to Full Court Presses in general. I love the Full Court Press. Uh, <laughs> some of the guys I was looking at for this, we've got Waylon Anderson from Rialto. He had 35 points in their game. Um, against Jay Hills. Then I've got Ryan Fung from Westminster, 24 points, six three-pointers in their win over Orange. Kids like to shoot three nowadays. What can I say? Six three-pointers in one game. I love the three. I love the <laughs> uh, Noah Fernando from Heritage Christian, 30 points and a tough three-point loss for St. Genevieve. And finally, Alex Bray and Kevin. I'm going to apologize in advance. Kevin Yaham Path. I hope that's right from university. That's pretty good. That's as close as I'm going to get. Um, yeah. <laughs> do you want to correct me real quick? No, I, I don't know it, but I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. Um, Kevin Wise, what we'll call him, from university. He had, uh, they had 34 and 26, respectively, in their win over LaSalle. So now it's time for the game picks. We will start with Valencia at Saugus. I'm going to go Valencia. I know Valencia beat them at home earlier this season by 11. Uh, home court advantage is, is huge in high school sports. Um, I've never been to a Saugus game. I'm not sure what kind of crowd they have, but... Uh, I'm going to stick with the uh, the uh, result from the last meeting, Saugus. I mean, Valencia over Saugus. Yeah, was, the first meeting was 91 to 80. Valencia yep. won, but they were home in that game. Obviously, I'm going to go with the home team there. I'm going to go Saugus. I think they're two very evenly matched teams. Tough to beat a team twice. All the cliches on the road, blah blah blah. So <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go with the cliches in this one, and I will take them. Uh, next, we got um, Sagerstrom and Ocean View. Uh, Ocean View in this one, I have a feeling uh, the Seahawks are going to go undefeated in league for you know the 20th straight time. I don't know. They haven't lost a league game in quite a while. Uh, Mikel Harvey's a, a six nine center athletic guy who's really difficult to deal with in that league. And then Paul Head is a, a very good uh, you know kind of combo point guard shooting guard guy who fills it up from three point range. Ocean View. I'll agree with you on that one. Uh, both those guys you just mentioned, Head and Harvey, both averaging over 16 points per game. Harvey killing on the boards as well. So tough matchup there uh, with Ocean View. Next bet, Los Altos going to Diamond Ranch. This is an interesting one. Um, Diamond Ranch has had a huge turnaround uh, behind the Ryan brothers who took over this year as the, the coaches. Uh, John Ryan being one who played at UC Irvine for four years uh, for his college career. And I love Diamond Ranch's point guard, Corey Joseph, one of my favorite high IQ players in Southern California. But I'm going to go with Los Altos. They got, they're coming off a tough loss uh, against Damian, and I think that they're going to have that uh, as motivation to, to you know, pick back up the winning atmosphere there. I agree with you. Both these teams have five common, common opponents. Excuse me, both the perfect 5-0. and oh, So, the, you know, pretty evenly matched game here, but I think Los Altos takes it. Uh, next, we have Paraclete and Crossroads at Crossroads. Uh, I'm going to go Paraclete Ooh. in this one. Yeah, I, I like, you know, Elijah Scranton and Jonathan Daniels. I think Jonathan Daniels is healthy. He's played in the last few games. Good point guard. Um, but I like the battle that Paraclete's probably going to give. You know, they, they play hard. Uh, their coach does a good job uh, with, with defense, and Crossroads has been struggling a little bit lately. Um, Sharif O'Neal is a big-time talent, and but I think I think Paraclete's going to pull this off. Yeah, I think it'll be a good game. I think and Paraclete might have the better team basketball, per se. Crossroads have the stars. I'm going to take Crossroads at home uh, here. Uh, it's they, as, Like you said, they're struggling. It's just hard for me to believe that's going to continue. I think they're going to pick it up eventually, so i got Crossroads. Final game, small schools. It's Brentwood going to Viewpoint. Small schools, big time coaches. Uh, coach Moose Bailey at Brentwood's a great coach, and JJ Prince at Viewpoint is also a brilliant coach. Uh, I'm gonna go with Brentwood here. Maybe a little bit of a of a uh, upset. I don't know. Uh, Brentwood on the road against Viewpoint, but I like Sam Clareman. I like Braley Albert uh, to come up big in this one. And Viewpoint with with the Feinberg brother. I love him too. So it's gonna be a good game. But I'm gonna go Brentwood. Yeah, I'm agree with you, Brentwood, on this one, Devin. Uh, any news you want to get out there? Where can we find you? Anything new 
in your world? <laughs> uh, nothing new. Just same old, same old. Just a lot of basketball. You can find me on my Twitter account ma- mainly. It's at Devin underscore Ugland, U-G-L-A-N-D. And that's where it's at. All right. That is this week's podcast. Make sure to come back next week. We'll be here again with more of the same. Thank you for watching.